So let's start it off. We're back. That's right, guys. We have yeah. returned for another movie. Yes, which one? <laughs> Man, you just kind of gave it away if you're if you're <laughs> subtle enough to see it, or if you looked at the YouTube title. <laughs> well, basically, we saw another Batman movie, Batman Returns, yes. starring Michael Keaton, Danny DeVito, Michelle uh, Pfeiffer. Yeah. Pfeiffer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so what was our reason for watching this one over all the other ones? Because well, last time we said we'd go backwards, <laughs> but we didn't. Yeah, we thought we'd do Batman forever, guys, but, you know, we'll, we'll let that dwell on. Not forever, but we'll get back to it. But the reason why is because it's cold outside. It's the Ice Age right now. It's February. It's very cold in Toronto. So that's why we did it. Last night it was very, freezing. It was freezing, guys. We're doing a very cold movie, a very dark movie. Batman Returns was just set uh, in uh, around Christmas time in December. Uh, but actually, the movie was released in the summer, guys. This is a strange thing about this movie. Yeah, yeah because I speculated that uh, yeah. that it was filmed in the summer. But or actually, oh, no, no, no. It, it was filmed, filmed in the winter, winter then in the, in the summer. summer yeah. yeah, but yeah. the reason we watched it was because at A&C, there was a bat in the attic. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah. There was a, there was a bat in our attic at A&C, and it somehow got through in the uh, storage area where we keep the games, and uh, they had to capture it. I mean, it, it damaged its wing. And I told Whitmore, yes, it's, it's a sign. We have to be. It's the bat signal. To, it's a bat. <laughs> That's what I was saying. We have and to then watch it, Batman Returns. So that was it. But then there were yeah. three other movies. It was like, which one? It's like it's freezing cold. Yeah. Hey, penguins. It's kind of cold. Yeah, so let's sense. do that. It was, it was really cold yesterday. By the way, uh, what was it? Uh, you sure the bat didn't have any like younglings in its uh, nest? Maybe I mean, like it made a nest. It's possible, yeah, because the attic is. I've never been up there, but apparently. It's I think it should be a good check, like in case there's more, and then yeah. you know next time something happens. But back to the movie, <laughs> alive and well. So this is my first time seeing Batman Returns. I played the Super Nintendo the uh, Nintendo the video game. Up, right? Yeah, the yeah. beat 'em up. Uh, I saw bits of this movie. Like I know Catwoman's in it and. Penguins in it, but other than that, I've never seen this movie, and it was the and it is directed by Tim Burton, who also directed uh, the first Batman. Yeah, nineteen eighty nine. Yep. So, well, one thing to say is, uh, I liked it. I, I, I liked the movie. I enjoyed it. I liked it better than Batman and Robin. Cause yeah. <laughs> Tim Burton's like style in this movie, you can definitely see it because there's a lot of it like shown throughout the movie where it's, it's very just, dark. Yeah, and, and, and a very nightmare before Christmas during yeah, the snow sure. scenes. This this came out around the same time, I think. Never came out slightly after. But yeah, definitely a prelude to that movie. Also, this movie is two hours long, and when we finished, I was like, it felt like an hour, 30 minutes, yeah, and it's like uh, any movie that does the thing where you watched it for a long time but didn't realize that you watched it for a long time. must It has to be a pretty good movie, because then you're not thinking about how long, how much is there left, like Batman and Robin. Yeah, definitely which good. Which will probably good. harp on a lot. <laughs> Definitely a good pace, and uh, I don't know. Were you happy to see you know actors that you were familiar with, like you know Christopher Walken as, uh, oh. as uh, Max Shrek? <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting Christopher Walken in this movie. I was well, just like, I was like, that just made this movie really funny. Because as long as you have Christopher Walken, you're bound to have something funny happen in this movie. And uh, yeah, he did pretty good as did. like the. Um, Kind of like the oh, the executive. He plays this character called Max. Yeah, Max Shrek. I mean, you, you kind of yeah, compared Shrek. him to uh, Scrooge. Scrooge in, McDuck. In way, so, or so. yeah, not McDuck. Just <laughs> Scrooge. <laughs> Scrooge McDuck is from Disney. Like but, a yeah. modern Scrooge. Because his hair, I was yeah, like, yeah, it looks sure. like. I think that's what they were. Yeah, they were pretty much aiming for. And because uh, that, hair, yeah, that hairstyle. It was also kind of old for this movie too, yeah. like the style. But and it also makes sense in a twisted kind of way. Because I mean, with Tim Burton, his messages are always darker. And but I, I could see, I could see at the end maybe he was trying to kind of redeem himself, like with like you know, like uh, the Penguin wanted to take his son Chip down into. Yeah, the, there was uh, like some moments sewer. where he said, "No, if you have any, you know, grudges, you wanna, what do you say, of uh, human emotion, take you'll take me instead." So. And the, the fact that he stepped up for his son there kind of showed he was maybe trying to redeem himself there. He he, he was. But, uh, he had a he had a goal. It wasn't a like, he wanted to be remembered for times the leg, the legacy. A, yeah, yeah, for his legacy. But, uh, but it was kind of the way he went about it was kind of just yeah, not always the right thing because, well, obviously he murdered uh, Selena Kyle who play who's Catwoman who's Catwoman basically. If you heard hear the name Selena, Catwoman, Catwoman right there. <laughs> but uh. Oh, crap. What but basically, that? I think what they were getting at, there were just different kinds of freaks and monsters at, uh, at a hand here. Of course, of course Batman had a had a 
dark childhood with his parents being murdered. He had Catwoman, uh, very uh, re- repressed, very... suppressed by her boss, and he had Shrek, who was you know using people, killing people to get what he wanted. And then he had the Penguin, who was because of his uh, from a yeah, because he because he was uh, he was a freak. Yeah, he freak. ate a cat in the beginning. I was like, oh well, he's not that bad. He eats the cat. I'm like. Okay, I can see why his parents would throw him out. His father was yeah. played by Pee Wee Herman. Or yeah, yeah Paul Rubens, who played Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, that's true. I was like, I was like, <laughs> that's that's not Johnny Depp or Ed Wood, is it's, it? Because it looks like it, but they, no. Were they trying to like subtly point out that maybe that's why he came out the way he did? Because like Peter was his dad. <laughs> no, that, that was bad. I don't know. Maybe he but, in, instead of yeah. uh, doing the do, he peed into the do. Maybe, yeah. Uh, Speaking of. Sp- Sexual stuff. This know, movie, there's a, there's a lot of innuendos in here, definitely. and some of them are, and some of them are, most of them are were kind of subtle. And yeah. the, but when it came to the penguin, he's just like, I wanna fuck you, and <laughs> well, I'm like, well, not like that, but yeah, he doesn't say those exact, <laughs> exact words, but yeah, he pretty much Imp- heavily, he implied heavily implied that, it. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you pointed out at the beginning where we see him devouring a cat, and then later on he's mingling with a cat woman, and he, you know, he's definitely trying to eat the cat in a different way at that point but it doesn't it doesn't come about that way but he's definitely trying hard to do that if yeah. you do it in in this time yeah. where he's like uh okay because because back then when when people referred to cats they called them pussies yeah and then much. penguin pretty much said they're like "Ooh, i'd like to eat that pussy and i'm just like oh god <laughs> i wasn't i wasn't yeah. i wasn't like disappointed with it. i'm just like oh god yeah, you act- they had to go there I don't know. it went there yeah so was this <laughs> Which one was your favorite Batman movie? Like in the uh, out of the first four, I still I still hold the original one, 1989. Uh, I think you'll like it when we get there. It's yeah, we almost accidentally did because I because uh, I got the disc wrong. Yeah, we but uh, well, speaking of Batman, this is my first time seeing Michael Keaton as, as Batman, Batman. Yeah. and what do you think? I Can, as Batman, he looked good. If the eyes, right? Work. Yeah, or like his stature, his posture, it's like it's very Batman, it definitely looks like it. Even though uh, the Batman is kind of a little... The th- stuff he does in the movie is kind of weak and kind of not Batman-like, but he still looked good as a Batman. But as Bruce Wayne... Yeah. He looked at like like James Bond. Yeah, Because, like you know, Bond. when he was talking with Christopher Walken, Max Shrek, I was like, I was like, oh, executive guy. And then until like Christopher Said Walken Bruce. was like, Bruce! And stuff, so I was like, oh, that's Bruce? I was like... <laughs> I couldn't pro- he does not look <laughs> doesn't feel like a Bruce Wayne. It doesn't feel like a Bruce Wayne. Uh, yeah. in fact I I'd say George Clooney fit better as Bruce Wayne sort of like not by much cuz he still kind of looked at like Sean Connery James Bond. I could kind of see that cuz Bruce Wayne's supposed to be like this playboy type of guy. Playboy uh, businessman. Yeah, he's pretending, you know, like he's just mingling with all these party people but And he's also like a deep very, down, very you know. very tough guy but deep down he's yeah. uh, you know, he's kind of a wreck yep. and uh well, thanks to like people like Alfred supporting him. Which, uh, speaking of which, uh, that actor is in all four Batman all movies. Four. Same with uh, Mike, Michael Go was his name or something. Go or how do you pronounce it? But, I, uh, it's, it's not going to be on this. On like this, that. but uh, he's in all four movies, so that yeah. was kind of like a little bit of a surprise. And so was Commissioner Gordon by Paul or, something. Or was that Michael Go? I forget. No, Michael Go is Alfred, and I forget. Yeah, the commissioner's name. Sorry. Um, yeah. It, it was like Paul something. We, we we skipped through the cast list and like uh, obviously you're probably not gonna remember the secondary people as much, but yeah they were in all four movies so it was kind of weird that it's not connected but it kind of is connected because yeah, it's like you I see mean, the same characters. Like, they did they touch on uh, the previous love interest of Batman, Vicky Vale. Yeah bit yeah in and then movie, in, but... and then we looked at the uh, the behind the scenes documentary thing notes and then like Tim Burton said it had nothing to do with the first movie and then it's like. Yeah. What about that thing with Vicky? Who I haven't seen the other Batman movie, yeah. so I, I, I don't know. They they touch up on that, but apparently it's not in the same universe, so it's kind of confusing it, well, or conflicting. I was I was telling uh, when we were talking earlier that you didn't have to have seen the first one to understand this one, which which, which is true. Which it's is like also yeah, that is very true. Like I didn't feel movie. like I was missing too much because no. it was kind of explained yeah. like in the movie itself, but not like you know. But not like, you know, it wasted its time explaining. Like, Vicky, this person, it's like, she was a reporter. It's like, oh, so maybe in the first movie she tried to go out, she found out his secret, and then it's like, you know, it didn't work out and all that stuff. And then in this movie, yeah, I mean, they come to realization that, yeah, they're, they know who they, well, they realize that, uh, you know, Batman is Bruce Wayne and Selena Kyle is Catwoman, and they have that 
realization when they're in the ball the ball and there's a, a missile mistletoe, mistletoe above and they bring them, it up and like i was like how, i was like this is part this is where i thought the batman part was not very batman because like they were they were all dancing and she was like oh mr toll it'd be it's kind of deadly if you eat it yeah and if i was batman i'd been like she's got but not be like oh, oh but a kiss is even more deadlier if you mean it and i'm just like Batman would not do this. So you think you would have realized it sooner, a and bit then kind of like yeah. uh, have this thing where, where later on Catwoman finds out it's like Bruce, you lied to me. All men are terrible, or something. And then <laughs> you know she he does something, that you know gains her trust. But then right there, that they're kind of like oh, so what do you, you want to do now? You want to fight outside? <laughs> okay. And I'm well, just. <laughs> And then he gets his ass kicked by Catwoman in like the first encounter, and I I was telling I was yeah. talking about like how how did Selena Kyle instantly just know how to like start Pick whooping ass like some of it might be because of the cat metamorphosis or whatever, but I don't believe it. If you're an office worker <laughs> and then suddenly started kicking ass, well, uh, any like you know background like oh she was a gymnast or like you know she she fought with a bunch of people and whatnot just. Yeah, because in the original comics, yeah, I'm pretty sure Catwoman... Was a thief? Yeah, a thief, and she was acrobatic. But in this film, she's revived by a cat, a bunch of, I guess, stray cats that come and bite her fingers and bring her back to life. I, I'm not... Uh, and I was, we were talking about, like, how... I was like, how did they get this to work? Did, like, yeah. sprinkle catnip all over yeah, and probably. the cat's all out over? But basically, she was a... Not a secretary, an executive assistant. Assistant, yeah. So there was, like, no training or anything. Like, if you're a thief, then... She, if you say you're a thief, then surely, yeah, you might have learned a few moves like disarming and yeah. being sneaky, dirty tricks. Up, yeah. Nope, she just like and she also gets the nine lives, <laughs> which they <laughs> prominently show in this movie. Which is which made me think of like a kind of like, like a uh, no, that wasn't it. Like it was kind of like a, some sort of neat idea where it's like you have a character that changes to another personality when the previous one dies, and then when that personality dies, yeah. it changes back to the other one. So it's like oh. That'd be kind of interesting. It kind of had like a, what we were pointing out, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, maybe, feel to it. From like, the video game, yeah. more specifically. Like a dual perso yeah, perso personality going on there. Um, uh, what would you say was the breakthrough performance in this film? Um, oh. Well, let's see. I, <laughs> I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say Batman, even nah. though it seems like the obvious choice, but honestly. Nah, I don't uh, think it was Batman either. Okay, not, uh, not to sidetrack. But I was I was talking to you like I was like this doesn't feel like, like a bat. Batman movie because it's like we're we're looking at the story of like the Penguin how the his villains. life is all shit and how he's trying to like uh, get it all right Selena, Selena the, the the stuff she goes through and uh, Max Shrek going through all that stuff and Batman just feels like he's in the background just to fix things like oh how do we stop this from happening <laughs> throw the play the Batman card there we go so uh, that's why I, that's why I'm also saying no I wouldn't say Batman really wasn't nah, like the highlight of the performance you're, you're right people point at uh, when tim burton filmed the, the first two batman films they always say that he gave the attention more to the villains which obviously is the case in batman decision. returns with penguin and Catwoman. i guess he, he find them more interesting maybe like because they have like because i guess it's because like i guess it's like we've heard enough about batman, batman you know yeah. you know we know he's a good guy but let's look at all the all the villains because they're kind of somewhat tragic because uh yeah, Penguin. It was tra it was tragic because his parents dumped him just because he was kind of creepy. They didn't do a good job of disposing him though. They and just kind of sort of let them li let him live. And they never point out what actually happened to his parents, but I, I have a feeling he probably found them and like from that thing them. when they discovered about like uh, where Penguin was all this time, which I'm I'm yeah. still kind of confused on that too, because he he was thrown off and went into the sewers, but didn't meet the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Although it would have been kind of funny if it was like the penguin was like a ninja penguin. Like alternator or so. And like he actually <laughs> kicked ass. But it was like a, he was with a circus crowd. Like, yeah. The, so the circus just went into the sewers and was like, or I guess Penguin it, freak, come with us, little boy. Is that how, yeah, how you think it came out? They, they discovered him somehow? Yeah. That, that just confused or me. Was, or were they down there already, possibly? Maybe that's where they were dwelling. Uh, well, because I assumed he was picked up by the penguin. Oh, the circus does explain how he grew up. Yeah. I wouldn't have bought it if you said, like, the penguins raised him. I'd have been like, yeah. <laughs> no. Like, I have a feeling the penguins were there with the circus group, which makes sense, because uh, they bring him into that sewer, kind of, so to speak, and then they'll, they, they literally carry him off into the uh, into the water when he when he when he ends up dying. Yeah. Cause let's see, it was uh, like uh, 
like, you know, if you had to see where he was in the carriage and then, like, a bunch of surface people came and picked him up and then it was like, oh, so that's how it went. And then later on, he, you know, he escaped and then lived in the sewer. Like, after he learned how to live by himself. I guess they wanted to make something. it mysterious, kind of. But, uh... Which, uh... <laughs> not really, I mean... Well, definitely it wasn't the origin that he had in the comics. They definitely changed a lot of things. Uh, he wasn't as, as uh, penguin-like in the comic, I would say. Uh, so much so, I don't know if you know this... Uh, Al, but uh, when this movie was initially released, they had a, a, a toy figure, or sorry, action figure line by Kenner, and uh, I guess they, they felt that the penguins was so hideous looking that they actually did not make a penguin figure, if you guys can believe that. Uh, the Kenner figure was the actual uh, 60s type of penguin, so he had the, you know, the, uh, the what's they called, monocle, yeah, monocle. Uh, in his eye, uh, the top hat, and he just all like, stylish. pointy nose, but he looked more like human. And just like a like chub, have a Pinocchio nose, chubby sort of? belly had like a not a tuxedo but like a suit. What's the one that kind of like tail? At the, yeah, coat. with a tail at the back. So that's that was the action figure they had back because I and for Christmas uh, that's that was one of the figures that I that I ended up getting with Batman and, and Catwoman. I think I think I got all three. But uh, yeah, so that's that's how hideous that, that they found this uh, the penguin. Speaking of character. the penguin, like uh, he was apparently inspired by a cigarette cart that had a penguin and like yeah. uh, what was the guy's name that made it Kane? Oh, when uh, Bob Kane, yeah, created Bat yeah, Batman, yeah. Yeah, okay, so he so saw the... <laughs> so we, we were looking at the behind-the-scenes things, and Penguin was in, was inspired by his mistake of, like, looking at the Penguin and was like, it looks like a little man in a suit. And I was <laughs> like, let's make a Penguin. And that was how it turned out. So it was kind of like... And this DVD is kind of neat, because I thought it was just going to be just the movie, but no, there was yeah, actually a little... some extras, for sure. Little extras in it. Actually, I don't know if you know this, Al, but... In the Batman TV series back in the uh, 60s. The live action? Yeah, live action. Do you know who played the Penguin? Do you remember? Uh, no. Okay, uh, basically Rocky's trainer. Ricky? Burg yeah, Burgess Meredith played Penguin. That's why he had that. Wait, Burgess, that Burgess, yeah, Burgess or Burgess? Yeah, Bur Burgess, yeah. So. Yeah, that, that, come on. yeah, he had the same voice. Oh, that he, <laughs> run that he over him. He was in Rocky. So he actually did Batman before he did the Rocky films, which is interesting. Huh. Yeah. That's interesting. So I'm wondering if uh, Stallone liked his voice, maybe, and, and used it for that. It but, uh, does sound like a very controlling type of voice. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, I thought in 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 my book, I, I believe that Danny DeVito had the breakthrough performance in this. He, he looked nothing like him. Obviously, the makeup was done really well. Uh, he was very... Like, you couldn't tell it was Danny DeVito, and nah, he didn't have his nah, voice, too. He nah, was, he didn't. It was all really nasty, and it was like, uh, wanting to get it on to the... <laughs> he sounded really frustrated down there, if you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, he did really well. Um, I think Michelle Pfeiffer did really well. She's yeah. she a very, very twisted uh, character, complex character. Yeah, it definitely f uh, sounded like a Catwoman when she was Catwoman. Uh, yeah. And but when she wasn't Catwoman, it kind of was like the same thing with Batman, just yeah. kind of like out of character. Before the trans or after the transformation, it was kind of like. Uh, but you could tell she was clearly messed up. Uh, yes, yes, yeah. yes. She, she had a very frayed out Tim Burton yeah. hair. I was like, that's very Tim Burton. Like it just, <laughs> you can just tell. Whenever I see like really messy hair like that, I'm just like, very Tim Burton. Well, what did you think of the? I guess the the bad gadgets in this one. Did you like them? Oh, it's. Uh, he had the uh, the bat boat. Oh, the bat boat. Oh yeah, the yeah. bat vehicle boat. He had <laughs> really? the batarang that he programmed. I was like, how does that even? And then the dog catches it, which is pretty. And funny. then he uses it to frame Batman later yeah. on. Uh, what, 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 what else do we have? He also had the the grapple hook that was like. Yeah, the grapple hook. He had the he had this new thing where he, in the first one he didn't have this. The Batmobile could actually turn around with like this rotating what was it that he had it, it, it just pushed the car it pushed the car up so it yeah, could turn yeah. around and then go the other way and it burnt, while burning, and burning. <laughs> a flamethrower uh, clown that was pretty great which was pretty funny yeah what else did he have yeah yeah uh, the gra uh, other the speaking of graphic we all we did talk about the language earlier like they used a lot of other like i was like when i was i was i was we were watching i was like i was like wow kids watch this because it was like stuff like bitch bastards and all that Son stuff bitch, i was yeah. like it was pretty dark, actually. Impressive. I, I was kind of uh, impressed. I wasn't offended or anything. I was just like, oh, that's... Well, my that's mom was always in tune with, with the movies that were going on at the time, so she... Yeah, she did not allow me to watch this uh, back when it came out. Uh, I think Even I, though it's Batman. Yeah, so I... But she allowed me to get the comic book, like was which was the comic book adaptation of this film, which was done really well. The artwork was really nice. Uh, I think... I forget who, who did the work. I think he might have been like a Marvel... Even though it was like a DC thing, it, it looked, seemed like a Marvel. Oh, remember, art, art uh, let's see, what was it? Uh, uh, back then, it was called a uh, DC Magazine. Yeah. 
But, uh, yeah, magazine, you're right, true. But, uh, yeah, that's how I, I first saw this film, I guess, through the comic book adaptation, which was similar. I, I well, think it, Yeah, you definitely saw it, just didn't watch it. Yeah, it wasn't as dark, but actually it was done, it was pretty faithful, though, to this film, yeah. So, I only saw this movie for my first time probably when it passed on TV, maybe like 1995 or four. When uh, you weren't uh, being restricted on yeah, what you watched. Yeah. Same with Ninja Turtles uh, 1989 movie. I didn't get to see that because my mom felt it was too violent. So I saw that later on. Yeah. It was it was kind of goofy violent. Uh, well, it had dark moments, though. Like when Shredder's like, you know. Well, it, the message to kids, like, oh, do <laughs> smoke cigarettes and do bad stuff, rebel. Yeah, yeah I guess true. that part would be pretty... Uh, not th- Wouldn't sit well with the parents. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's see. Mm. What else can we comment about this? Uh, music? What do you think of uh, I was gonna Dan- say. Danny Elfman in this? Uh... Well, you got the... Yeah, we got the animated series. Yeah, that was good. I don't quite remember the rest of the soundtrack to it, though. Yeah. It's like... Nah, it was like... It was just kind of like in the middle. Like, it wasn't bad enough to make me go like, Oh, this sounds terrible or something. But it wasn't memorable. Yeah, it wasn't like memorable. But it was there. It wasn't bad. Could have been better. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, we already talked about the, like how the movie looks because th- Tim Burton directed it. The, the, the movie is very dark. So much so that you couldn't even tell the, I, uh, the I, Batmobile effects at times, right? Yeah, when it was putting the like Armor. armoring itself, I was like, <laughs> I, was like I can't see. I, I can't see this. I don't know if it's because of my TV, but like... Um, no, it's probably just the way it was filmed. Uh, I mean, the, the first Ninja Turtles movies had the same, same issue at times where it was too dark to see what was going on. In the sewers, but yeah, I guess just uh, it was just the you know product of its time. It w- the filming back then wasn't as crisp as it is now, and yeah, yeah, because it showed like because uh, when it loaded up, my PS3 was like 480p. I was like, oh, and you were like, huh? So uh, is that good? I was like, no, yeah, it's it's good for the time because yeah. sev- it's not HD, but it's like a uh, pretty decent quality, like VHS quality. Well, I mean, we I think we've touched on pretty much. Everything, the characters, the character, the story. Well, darkness. We, we didn't really talk about the story. We talked about the character, which involved the story. But, well, I uh, guess we don't want to reveal it too much. I mean, yeah, yeah. Let's I'm keep sh- it. I'm sure most people have seen it by now, but just in case. Uh, yeah, just in case, like for those yeah. who haven't seen it, like me. <laughs> but uh, oh, okay. So, what did you think of like the overarching story in like uh, this movie? Like with Max Shrek. You know all the characters and what's going on. Well, I mean, the penguin definitely, he's pretending to be something that he's not. Like, at first he's pretending, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm still a human being, you know, give me some decency, you know, human respect. <laughs> give me some respect. But uh, uh, deep down, you know, he's, he's still a, a monster, and he's, he shows that throughout the, the film. Uh, so, yeah, you're hoping that he can, I guess, redeem himself. Have to redeem himself. But clearly, because he's the penguin, he's yeah, not. Kind of like, like Batman, when he's watching the whole film, uh, news clip. He's like, oh, I'm hoping that he, you know, gets to meet his parents. Remember when he's talking to Alfred about it? I thought him? that was. But then deep down, he he's he, he has like a he, he doesn't a, want all the attention given to him. I think he has a feeling that you know Penguin probably is pretending to be something that he's not. That's why he's, he's investigating it afterwards. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. Mm. yeah. Anyways, it's, yeah, it but... sounds too good to be good to be true. Yeah. And because like we <laughs> we are a tech side, we just know the Penguin's gonna do something bad. Yeah. Of but yeah, like the overarching story, like. It's just focused on the characters. I don't think there's like a grand scheme thing. Like, well, yeah, Penguin's trying to become there's a mayor, a known, be a mayor, mayor but it's race, like so. it kind of like it kind of peters out a little bit because it was more about showing how how des how desperate he wanted to be mayor. So he did all this dirty deed behind the back trying to uh, frame Batman. I, I don't think that would be spoiler because you know <laughs> Penguin's gonna do something bad yeah. like that, but we didn't tell how it was done. And then you got Catwoman just. Just trying to find out who she who is because she, yeah. she lost her identity, sort of, and Batman's trying to help. Actually, she's actually I think her perf- I think her character story was kind of just a little weak. Yeah. I, and then you got uh, Christopher Walken, Max Shrek, uh, trying to build a power plant to leave a legacy, control power, and all that stuff. Uh, well, going back to one of your pre- previous questions, I guess I would have to say Danny DeVito's Penguin probably was the highlight of it. Yeah. Because mainly because we spent the most time with him, I. Yeah, it felt I would that say way. So. It felt like the the Penguin returns. Yeah, and because uh, he does come out of the sewer, right? So I mean, he is returning to where he used to be. 
In a yeah, way. he definitely felt like uh, yeah. like I was watching the penguin through and through, like an yeah. interesting uh, Tim Burton dark version of it. Yeah. So that's so. So yeah, like overarching story, not that great. The character story or character character story development better, right? but development better. It's kind of like the same thing I felt with Terminator Two with Sarah Connor. Because it was like it was kind of more focused on her, uh-huh. yeah. and, but the overarching plot of saving John Connor, keeping John safe, was kind of secondary-ish. Because you were just seeing how desperate uh, Sarah was to yeah. try to keep him safe in the lengths she would go to. So that's kind of what I felt like uh, with uh, this movie too. But overall, I I still enjoyed it. Yeah, I I mean, and when it came out in the theaters, uh, I don't think it did as well as the nineteen eighty nine film. Probably because maybe parents didn't think it was suitable. Yeah, for, maybe it for didn't. For children. It didn't live up to it or something because <laughs> they expected something uh, much better or that it didn't like. It wasn't like a sequel, a true sequel to like the original. Yeah, it was... it's possible. But uh, yeah, overall, it, it's a it's a dark film. If if you like Batman, in a scene in a dark style, you'll you'll probably appreciate it. Um, I mean, it's not the greatest Batman film ever made, but. It's, it's not bad either so like I said better than <laughs> Batman and Robin and yeah. I I would sort of watch it again but probably not for a long while because uh, like like I said with the story just mm, kind of just uh, yeah it's it's not like a it's not a feel good movie that's for sure so if you if you want to see like kind of bittersweet yeah if you're hoping to see a feel good movie it's not really gonna be there. <laughs> But uh, yeah, yeah. It's just like I, th- I think like the overarching story was just kind of unfocused and just all character studies. And it's like uh, once you know the character, it's kind of like okay, yeah, I know who you are. And just like yeah, like interesting past and all that. So, but no, not a bad movie. I, I, I would recommend it. Yeah, like checking it out at least. Yeah, if you're a Batman fan, definitely check it out. Um, when I was pointing out a little bit about the the marketing for this film. I mean, they did have a lot of video games. Uh, yes. They, what was unique about this particular movie is that each game was actually different on each system. So Super Nintendo had a beat 'em up. Uh, the Genesis version was more like a platforming. Oh yeah, I think I did play that. Which was it, extremely that hard. That was like one of the hardest. That games was also I've really dark played. too, because yeah, it, was it was hard to dark. see. Yeah, literally dark too. Uh, and then the Batman, Re- <laughs> Batman Returns for NES was a beat-em-up, but it was different from the SNES. Uh, you, you actually had scenes where you were uh, in the Batboat, you were in the Batmobile, but those were like more like bonus scenes, I would say, like where you get points and stuff. For extra lives? Yeah, but for the most part, it was a beat-em-up. Uh, and you could actually have the, uh, the grappling hook. You could use that as a weapon, which is kind of cool. So if there was enemies above you, you could destroy them with your grappling hook. Oh, that's kind of... And uh, you also like pointed out the organ trailer. Oh, yeah, organ grinder, yeah. Grinder yeah. was in the movie. That guy is really or, hard in the... In NES. the game. <laughs> NES game, anyway. But in, in the film, yeah, he's, he's nothing. Like, and same with like the one of the clowns, the uh, damsel. Oh, the, yeah, the, the female... Uh, what do they call the, her? The knife... Yeah, the knife wielding woman. Yeah, she, yeah, the knife wielding one. She's pretty hard in the NES version. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, interesting marketing. Uh, McDonald's actually had figures when this came out. I think and, I might. Uh, rem- I think I recall that. And surprisingly, uh, they, they allowed the 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 grotesque penguin to be in it. So he was he was as he's seen in the film. Uh, obviously, he's not. He doesn't have you know like black blood through his mouth or anything. But yeah, oh, or what or what looked like mascara. Yeah, but he definitely looks like the the penguin from the film. As opposed to the Kenner action uh, figure. Oh, line. geez. When when the penguin died and when... Uh, yeah, that's pretty... <laughs> not, not really spoilers. Yeah. Either the villains die or they don't. Yeah. So we just kind of... <laughs> spoil-ish. Like, when when the penguins are carrying the, ping- down the, the penguin the- <laughs> down the thing, I was like, how are they doing... Oh, the penguins. The, sp- the special effects. We didn't quite talk about that part. Yeah, that's but, true. But uh, the, the penguins. Yes, this man. movie did a very good job with, like, the penguins. Because I honestly could not tell what was a real penguin or what was a fake one yeah they had uh like some scenes was like like with the emperor penguins i was like it's too, there's a too probably big, right? a good chance it's a it's a person but i can't tell because tim burton apparently got an army of penguins yeah. for this movie Which and just... i was actually impressed by how uh, they got got them all organized i was like <laughs> that's kind of impressive like uh, you got to give the movie props for that yeah and stan winston uh, worked on it oddly enough oh yeah, yeah stan yeah. winston 
Yeah, so they had special effects. They had like robotic penguins. They had puppeteers. Animatronics, animat- puppeteers. Animatronics, and they actually had small people in, I guess, bigger penguin costumes. Yeah. Yes, but there were actual penguins too. But yeah, uh, yeah the uh, special effects were very well done. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what else can we point on. I think we pretty much... I think for the most part we talked about <laughs> what we could have could think of about the movie. So, yeah, go check out Batman Returns. Or yes. if you haven't seen it in a while, go, uh, go return and take a look at it. Yes, the promise will re- return and will return as well, guys. The promise will be back. Yeah, so next time, not sure if it's going to be another Batman movie, but uh, we'll see. Maybe another... Maybe the next one will have, like, a comedian fall out of the attic. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll see. All right, guys, thank you. Promise will be back. Peace. Stay tuned. Mm-hmm.